Hi everyone, it's the Math Sorcerer here with Chegg. In this video, we're going to discuss trigonometry. Let's do an example. The question is to solve this equation. We have the sine of 2x equal to sine x over the interval from 0 to 2 pi. Solution. So the first step in this problem is to use a very important identity that actually comes up a lot in calculus. It's the identity that tells us that the sine of 2x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. So this identity is used a lot in calculus. So super, super useful to know it. So in this particular problem, we have sine 2x equals sine x. So the first step is going to be to replace sine 2x with this identity. So this is 2 sine x cosine x equal to sine x. Now you might be tempted now to maybe like divide by sine x, but when you do that you might lose solutions. In fact you will. So instead of doing that you want to set it equal to zero. So subtract sine x from both sides. That gives us 2 sine x cosine x minus sine x and that's equal to zero. At this point, we can factor out a common factor of sine x. So we have sine x, parentheses, 2 cosine x, and then minus 1. And that's equal to 0. And you can check sine x times 2 cosine x is 2 sine x cosine x. Sine x times negative 1 is negative sine x. Whenever you have a product equal to 0, you set each factor equal to 0. We have sine x equals 0 or 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. Here you can add 1 and divide by 2, and so we get cosine x equals 1 half. Okay, now it's where, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to draw a picture of the unit circle here. So here's the y-axis, here's the x-axis, so x and y. The unit circle is a circle of radius 1 centered at the origin. And it's very special because every single point on the unit circle can be written in a very special way in the form cosine theta, comma sine theta. So basically, the x-coordinate on the unit circle is cosine, the y-coordinate is sine. Here's 0, here's pi, and here's 2 pi. And here's pi over 2, and here's 3 pi over 2. So we want sine of x to be equal to 0. So that's asking when is the y coordinate 0? Well, that's going to happen at two places, here and here. So we're going to get a couple answers here. We're going to get x equals 0. We're also going to get x equals pi. But then we're also going to get x equals 2 pi. So sine x equals 0 will have three solutions over our interval, which is restricted. Recall, it's between 0 and 2 pi. All right, now we have to figure out this other equation, cosine x equals 1 half. So from memory, so this is purely from memory, x is equal to pi over 3. Okay, so it's just from straight, straight memorization. So that's something that's worth memorizing. Okay? The cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. But there's possibly another answer. So let me show you how to find that. Here's the y-axis. Here's the x-axis. And again, think about the unit circle. Cosine is the x-coordinate, sine is the y-coordinate. So pi over 3 is here. Then you might ask yourself, where else uh, is cosine positive? Well, it's going to be positive in quadrant 4. So it turns out that you can draw an angle that looks something like this. I'm going to draw it like this. And the cosine of this angle is also going to be uh, 1 half as long as this angle has what's called a reference angle of pi over 3. Because the trig function values okay, of an angle and its reference angle are the same except possibly a sine issue. So we know that the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. So we're asking where is the other angle on the unit circle that has uh, a cosine which gives us uh, you know, pi 1 half? Well, it's this angle here. And so it has to have a reference angle of pi over 3. So to figure out this angle, 
this blue angle here, that's the one we're trying to find. What we have to do is we have to subtract. So here's 2 pi, which can be written as 6 pi over 3. So it's pi over 3 less than that, so it's going to be 5 pi over 3. In this case, x is equal to 5 pi over 3. So those are the two answers there. So we end up with five answers in this problem. Let's go ahead and do another example very similar to what we just did here with this cosine x and the 1 half because I know it takes a lot of time to get good at that. So let's do something else related to this. This time we're going to keep the algebra simple and focus on the part that is conceptually difficult for people. So we have to solve sine x equals 1 half over the interval 0 to 2 pi solution. As before, let's start by thinking of the unit circle. So here's the y-axis, here's the x-axis. So this is x and this is y. And remember that on the unit circle, that's my, let me fix my circle there, make it a little bit better. On the unit circle, every ordered pair has the form cosine theta, comma sine theta. So sine is the y-coordinate. So from memory, um, we know that x is equal to pi over 6. Again, something you want to memorize. You want to memorize those function values for pi over 3, pi over 6, pi over 4, etc. So from memory. So where is that? That's going to be right here. Right, quadrant 1. So this is pi over 6. The sine function is also positive in quadrant 2 because it's the y-coordinate. So the sine of an angle that has a reference angle of pi over 6 is going to give us the same thing as long as that angle is over here. So if I draw an angle here and I draw the reference angle here in red, that's pi over 6, we have to figure out what this angle here is in blue. To do that, you want to think of pi as a number over 6. It's really 6 pi over 6. Okay. You subtract one from that, that's going to give you 5 pi over 6. So the other answer is x equals 5 pi over 6. And those are the only two answers. Again, so once you know you have pi over 6, you know there's going to be another angle, and you ask yourself, okay, this is equal to 1 half, so where else is sine positive, because 1 half is positive? Well, quadrant 2. Then you say, okay, what is the angle that is in quadrant 2 that has a reference angle of pi over 6? Well, that angle is 5 pi over 6. Let's go ahead and finish this video by talking about some other identities that come up in calculus because they're just super important. So the most common ones you're going to see are the one we saw earlier, sine 2x, which is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. Okay, this is super useful. It's going to come up when you learn integration, series, etc. Then you have sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. From this one, there's two others you should memorize. Watch this. So sine squared x is equal to 1 minus the other one squared, so 1 minus cosine squared, and cosine squared x is equal to 1 minus the other one squared, so 1 minus sine squared. The other one that's really important is 1 plus tan squared x is secant squared. You can come up with this one by dividing everything here by cosine squared. And the other one that's kind of important, it doesn't come up that much, but I'll write it for completeness, is this one here. And again, you can come up with this one by dividing sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1 by, by sine squared. There's two more I want to show you that are really key. And you learn these in trig, but not really. Like, they don't come up this way until you study calculus. So cosine squared is 1 plus cosine 2x over 2. And then sine squared x is 1 minus cosine 2x over 2. And there's so many more identities, but the ones you see here on the screen are definitely the ones that come up the most. So I think these are the ones uh, worth memorizing. Hopefully this video has been helpful and you've learned some math. Definitely um, worth memorizing these if you're studying calculus because they come up so much. If you enjoyed this video, uh, make sure to check out more videos on Chegg. Until next time, good luck and take care.